Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Brian. I am off the farm today. I am not just a farmer. How I support my family and pay my bills is I am a construction guy. I do plumbing and electrical and woodworking, carpentry. Today we are going to install a new yard hydrant. This hydrant has failed and the client has asked me to replace it. You wanna start by digging down to the base of your hydrant. I still have to clean out some of the debris that's down in this hole, so I'll do that and get it ready to pull out of there, and we're going to change this thing together, so stick with me. This is not a sponsored video, but I do highly recommend the Woodford, Iowa, frost-free hydrants. They're made in the USA. I have five of them at my farm and I would not want anything else. They're long-lasting and they do a great job. Let's open this hydrant up and kind of go over the anatomy. Okay, this is a three-foot berry. It's going to be buried with three feet of soil up to here, and then it's going to stick up out of the soil about 27 inches to the spigot, I believe. So how these hydrants work is at the top where you turn on the faucet, this little rod here extends all the way down the shaft to the base. And down here where the water is hooked up, there's a plunger that fits and seats itself down in here. A rubber stopper on the end of that long rod, it will push all the way in here and seal the water down below the surface of the ground, three feet where it doesn't freeze. So that is that rubber stopper. So it's open and right in that space is where the water would come in here and go up around the plunger all the way up to the top of the hydrant. So now I'll close this and we'll take a look down here. And now you see that black plunger is completely sealing the base of that. And then once it's closed, any remaining water in the pipe will drain out of this little drain opening right here. Okay, so let's get to work. First, we wanna turn off the water if you're in a city, that would be found out at your meter box out by the street somewhere. If you're in, a, in the country like we are here, there's probably a pump house or a breaker box with the pump breaker. You want to turn off the pump breaker and you definitely want to be sure to turn off the hot water heater breaker because if you drain the lines for any reason, you might burn up your elements or someone else's elements. Those are the first two things you want to do when dealing with plumbing. Okay, so we are in the panel, the electrical panel, and over here I see well at number 23 is the well, and 24 and 25 is the water heater. 23 right there, turn the pump off, and 24 and 25 is water heater. Turn the water heater off. Even though we turned the breaker off back at the panel, we want to come in and empty the pressure out of the pressure tank. So this particular setup, it looks like there's a hose here that we can turn on. So even though the pump isn't on, this tank still holds quite a bit of pressure and we want to let that out of the line before we do any plumbing. Kind of water the lawn here. The sediment filter is releasing all the water and the pressure gauge is down to nearly 10 and dropping. So we are good to go. The pressure tank is empty. There's no more pressure in the main line going to our hydrant. So we can go ahead and pull the hydrant without worrying about getting blasted in the face with water. I find a little metal can container makes it easier to get some of the, the fines out of the bottom of the pit here. I do have a goal to get a thousand subscribers by the end of 2020. So if you'd like to help us out, please consider hitting the subscribe button and joining the farm fam. Let's keep digging. Okay, there's the main line exposed. I've given myself just a skosh of room below and we're gonna have some water fill this up when we initially pull this spigot. We're gonna have to undo this, let it fill and drain out. You know, I think it didn't quite, okay. So I would imagine water's going to be coming out of this for a little while. 
We still need to remove the elbow down here and replace all that with new parts. So now we have the hydrant fitting off of there. I still need to get that 90 off of there. So I want to hold tension on my main line so I don't loosen any pipes on the main line scene. And then I can loosen this street 90. So this will take some practice if you're not used to it, especially when using these massive pipe wrenches. Let's see if I can go to a smaller wrench here. And being so deep, it isn't the easiest of scenarios. Oh, a little treasure just dropped in. All righty, there we go. All clear, good deal. Okay, got it. I'm just gonna use the back of my glove because that's all I have right now. Make sure there's no debris. And I will add a thin layer of pipe thread compound. A great plumber showed me this trick. You put a little pipe thread compound on there first. I'm hoping you can see that and you're not staring at my neck or something. You want to wrap your Teflon tape and that pipe dope helps hold it in place and you're able to wrap that easy. I spent many an hour trying to keep my Teflon tight on a pipe end. The next thing we will do is get our Street 90 buttered up here. One revolution, two revolutions, three revolutions. And I'll just kind of go around that. Now having that on before we're down in the hole just makes it a little easier. Now we can come on down in here. Thread. Thread our 90, our elbow, as they call it. Going to the big daddy. It's getting pretty snug. Not quite vertical, but just enough so I can seat the hydrant. So I'm gonna thread and turn the hydrant on to that 90 degree and then level up the hydrant. But before I do that, I'm gonna put this stainless steel elbow into the drain plug. So put a little pipe dope on there. Hello, son. And this just, this doesn't need to be super tight, but we do want it to face downward. A little tighten up on there. So we're going to thread our hydrant. Go in reverse and you'll feel the thread kind of click into that first thread. That feels good. So you can see here how offset that pipe is. So I left that 90 offset. I'm gonna keep tightening this hydrant on and then I'll level it up. And that final leveling will tighten that bottom 90. Okay, perfect. Thumbs up. So one thing I like to do is use this 10 mil William H. Harvey tape, pipe tape. And I should have done this before I installed it. I'll start at that bottom, the brass connector, and I'm just gonna wrap this pipe up till ground level. And that just extends the longevity of the pipe. Just above ground level. Put a couple finishing wraps, and then a big break. Oh, that's tough stuff, boy. What I like to do on all my yard hydrants, I'll cut the top out of this bucket. I'll cut a little horseshoe shape out of one side to fit over the main line coming in, and I'll fill this with gravel right down around that drain elbow down at the bottom of the hole. So that'll be filled with gravel. There's no way any sand or sediment can backfill that drain plug and it'll always drain into this big bed of gravel. 
trick of the trade just for you subscribers out there man i wish that was topped with just premium ice cream right now i'd just be so i'm just gonna cut a little horseshoe shape out of there leave a spot for the main line to come in you always want to cut away from yourself don't hurt yourselves now hopefully this sleeves down over like that and we're gonna fill this up this cavity with gravel Now we can fill it in a little more. With whatever. A little more. Okay. I'm gonna drive two pieces of rebar in under the slab this way and as close to the pipe as I can. And I'll drive another one back here into that soil that way. So you're taking up a lot of the stress from opening and closing your frost free by pipe clamping something like a concrete stake or a piece of rebar in the soil, clamping that to the, the rebar. So you get a nice strong connection there. Let me show you what I mean. Undo the pipe clamp so it's free. All right, there we go, tighten her down. If I pull on that, there's very little lateral movement. So when I'm pulling on the handle, most of that movement is gonna be taken up by this rebar. So that is a really nice little trick of the trade. If you appreciate these tricks of the trade I'm showing you, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and get ready for more videos because I'm not stopping people. If you can help me, by all means, hit that button. But only if you like what I'm doing. I mean, don't fake it. This is real life, guys. Let me tell you, kids, no job is done until everything is cleaned up. And if you are familiar with the leave no trace ethic in the back country. It's kind of how you want your job sites. You don't want anybody to know you were here. You don't want your tools laying around, any trash, plastic bags, dirt. You want this clean and your new frost free, you want it to look like has been there forever, even though it's brand spanking new. Make sure you clean up your job sites. team that's a wrap thanks for joining me for the yard hydrant install i hope you learned something some of those tricks of the trade that'll go a long way to keeping your hydrants running for a long time so hopefully that helped you if so give me a thumbs up leave me a comment and please consider subscribing to the channel down below subscribe thanks again shaka oh baby okay she is looking good I don't really like how the water drains back against the house. Maybe I'll fill that in, but with this slab here, it's a little difficult to do anything, but we can grade that a little back here and maybe make a trough to drain out to the lawn or something over here.